Number 10, eaten by the Punisher. Yum. That's what the Punisher must be thinking. That and brains. Yes, this terrible moment comes to us from the alternate Marvel Zombies universe. In this reality, awful things happen to a lot of characters, and unfortunately, Scarlet Witch is no exception. She ends up being devoured and made into a meal by a zombified Frank Castle after briefly teaming up with Ash Williams of the Evil Dead, who also finds his way into this crazy deadite filled world. Number nine murdered by Rogue. This one gets ranked lower as it all ended up working out in the long run anyway. Still though, this was a pretty shocking moment as while Rogue hadn't forgiven Scarlet Witch by any means for what she had done to mutant kind, the two were still both on the same Avengers team at the time. Awkward. So they were teammates when this all went down. In the end, Scarlet Witch is killed by Rogue, then Rogue is killed by Grim Reaper, and Wonder Man basically gives his own life to help Wanda complete the spell that she was casting. But of course, as dark and awful as all this felt at the time, none of it would be permanent because, well, comics. So don't worry too much because all these characters are A-OK. -okay. Well, Grim Reaper is A-OK -okay and then isn't, so yeah. But this isn't the end of him here anyways. Number eight, her own village turned on her. The story of how Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver came to join Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants is kind of a sad one. A fire was ravaging her village and Wanda attempted to use her powers to put it out. But her powers only scared the other villagers who instead blamed Wanda for causing the fire in the first place. It was as the angry mob turned on her that Magneto arrived to save the day. Forever in debt for saving her life, Wanda agreed to join his brotherhood, and Pietro agreed to go with her in order to protect her. Both not knowing at this point the fake truth about Magneto and his relation to them. Not putting relation in quotations because I disrespect it, I'm just doing it because, you know, I know that they're not really related anymore, even though I wish they were. Number seven, losing her husband. As much as WandaVision paints a pretty picture of meritable bliss for the couple that is Scarlet Witch and Vision, the reality in the comics is that it actually didn't really end that well. It probably actually won't end that well in WandaVision either, to be honest. And while in the comics, many people may blame Wanda's actions for this, as during Avengers Disassembled, she weaponized her husband, using him to, well, hurt his own friends, the reality is these two were struggling for quite some time before that. In fact, I would even suggest that their marital problems only helped lead Wanda to the mental break that caused Avengers Disassembled. At one point, Vision was disassembled and put back together again, actually disassembled, but this time without his emotional connection to Wonder Man. This created a huge challenge for the couple, and although Vision's memories would end up being restored to him of his and Wanda's time together, he would never really be the same, becoming much more emotionless from that point on. In a way, Wanda lost her husband when this happened, and she never really fully got him back. Did I also mention that Vision ended things with Wanda over the phone? Because that's also a thing that happened. Which it's gotta be hard. <laughs> Number six, the trial of Scarlet Witch. Well, there never really was a full-on trial because then House of M happened, but before that, the X-Men and Avengers did at least have a discussion about what to do with Wanda after learning how unstable she was from Professor Charles Xavier, and after learning his power wouldn't be able to hold her back much longer from potentially doing harm and just completely going bonkers. In this discussion, we found out the mutants straight up wanted to kill her for the most part, especially Emma Frost and Wolverine. However, Kitty wasn't about that plan at least. Well, pretty much all of the Avengers thought there must be a better way to deal with the situation and planned to try to talk to Wanda and just figure it out with her. They were like, she's our teammate, she's our friend, she's going through stuff. In the end, however, when the Avengers and X-Men teamed up to go after Wanda, Quicksilver believed they were coming to kill her. And consider Considering that, you know, Emma Frost and Wolverine kind of planned to probably do so anyways, probably wasn't wrong. And he also told his then-believed father Magneto as much. It was this ultimatum that prompted Wanda to use reality to create House of M. How awful would it be to know that just because you couldn't control yourself and you were suffering from a mental breakdown, that other heroes wanted to kill you? That's pretty rough. Number five, her reality shattering. 
One of the worst things to happen to Wanda likely was when the reality she built during House of M fell apart and just completely shattered. This wasn't just bad for her, by the way, but was also kind of bad for mutants, as in the end, it led to decimation. I'd also kind of like to argue it was sort of bad for everyone, since Wanda was trying to give everyone, like, you know, their, their idea of, like, an ideal future, so, um... Yeah, it was pretty bad for everybody when that fell apart. Although, you know, ignorance isn't bliss, so hey. The really sad thing here, too, was that Wanda was actually trying to make the world good, especially for mutants, and yet in the end it would be mutants who would probably hate her the most as a result of this. It's kind of like a weird, ironic twist. Her perfect fantasy reality would come to an end, which would lead to a lot of ongoing pain for Scarlet Witch. Although some might think, you know, that she deserved to suffer after, as she is the one who created the problem to begin with, I think it's also important to note how many times her family and heroes kind of failed to be there for her, when it obviously seemed like she was hurting. I actually think House of M is more about like this vilification of mental illness and like a warning that like we need to like be better. People don't just typically have a psychotic break out of the blue. It's important to remember that there is usually something that causes something like this. So we can't just blame Wanda. That's too easy in my mind. Number four, Magneto has her committed. In the animated series X-Men Evolution, Wanda gets a sort of different backstory. Here she has shown up growing alongside her brother raised by their father in the series Magneto. However, when her powers manifest at a young age and prove to be uh, out of control, Magneto decides to have her committed, knowing it'll take too much of his own time if he tries to help her. Thanks, Dad. That's great. Despite the fact that young Wanda does not like this plan and actually begs her father not to leave her, he does so anyways. As a result, she spends years institutionalized and when Charles Xavier comes to visit her in an attempt to help her, not even he seems to be able to really get through to Wanda. Number three, manipulated by the high evolutionary. Wanda's true origin story, true origin story, came out following the events of Axis, where we learned that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, while being related to one another, were actually not related to Magneto, nor were they truly mutants. This would lead to a lot of confusion in regards to Quicksilver's abilities, but it would also lead to some pretty dark truths being revealed about their past. Weird, dark truths that, I mean, don't honestly make a ton of sense. The High Evolutionary, it turns out, had experimented on the two of them when they were younger, and then decided to disguise them genetically as mutants before releasing them back out into the world. The High Evolutionary was then responsible for the powers that they had, and in a way was responsible for kind of creating who they were today. But this also led to them believing for most of their lives that they were mutants and Magneto's children, due to his weird disguise for them, which has to be even more confusing for the two of them as individuals than it even was for us reading it. Could you imagine if that was your life? If you were like, hey, I've been a mutant my whole life. Oh wait, no, I never was. And High Evolutionary is just like, I did that actually, that was me. Go away, High Evolutionary, get out of here. Number two, her brother's death. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this was a heartbreaking moment for Wanda. Pietro was not just her brother, but he was like her other half. Losing him was like losing a part of herself. And as they were both orphaned, you also have to consider that Pietro was the last bit of family that she had left. So losing him was deeply painful as well for Wanda, as it meant she was now all alone, the last surviving member of her family. In WandaVision, Wanda seems to be building a family of her own, but even there we still see the mark of this sadness that Pietro's death left with her. This fear that she like carries around with her, that like she's alone, she doesn't have anyone. So sad. Number one, her relationship with her brother. Normally I'd say this relationship is really a rock for Scarlet Witch and that I enjoy how much these two siblings stick together no matter what and lean on each other for support. It's them against the world and I love that, but there is an exception to where I love this feeling, and that exception is their relationship in the Ultimate Universe. Here, the siblings crossed a major line when it was revealed that they were closer than siblings should be, and loved each other in more than just a plutonic or familial sense. This was definitely taking their relationship way too far, and was one of the worst things that has happened to either Scarlet Witch or Quicksilver in the comics, in my opinion. Ew. 10. 
being named Traitor. As awful as this one is, it ranks a little lower on our list because, well, Wanda kind of deserved this one. After the events of House of M, Wanda was seen as one of the biggest mutant traitors around, still being believed at this point to be a mutant. Oddly enough, Scarlet Witch was one of the few prominent mutants in comics who has never been part of the X-Men team, and was really only an Avenger. If you're wondering why that is, a big part of it in the later years has to do with mutants hating her due to the fact that she basically wiped them from existence with her wish of no more mutants, which we now refer to as decimation. Well, that and she was initially too busy serving on her father's villainous team of mutants, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Still, although she did earn the title traitor, much of what has happened as a result of House of M happened because of basically how harshly people were treating Wanda. So, although she earned the title traitor, it still feels a little harsh to say that she entirely deserved it. I've always thought of Wanda as more of a misguided villain when she plays that role, as opposed to a true and sincere villain in the comics. Number 9 cast as a villain. To expand on our previous point a bit more, a few of the worst things that have happened to Scarlet Witch usually involve her being cast in some kind of villainous role, despite the fact that she is truly a hero when it all comes down to it. Scarlet Witch only ever wants to do what's best, and usually it's some kind of outward manipulation or force that turns her momentarily evil, or causes her to break down and commit some kind of heinous action. It does make for some pretty interesting stories, but it's pretty awesome awful the number of times and how severely Scarlet Witch has been used in this way by others and when it comes to storytelling. Number 8. Betrayed by her fiancé Remember when Wanda was about to marry Doctor Doom and then it was implied that he really only wanted to be with her because he wanted to take her power from her? Granted, it seemed like he also wanted to do so to help her and help the world, but of course it's still Doom, so you can bet that ego and selfishness were a big part of the reasoning behind this plot as well. Scarlet Witch no longer remembered who she was when her reincarnation son and member of the Young Avengers, Wiccan, came to find her. All she knew was that she loved Victor Von Doom and was ready to marry him, despite the fact that he had kind of manipulated her. Her love was real, but the backstory that she believed she belonged to wasn't. Wanda ended up spurned and mistreated by Doom even after the truth came out, and she still tried to help him. And before we move on to this next point, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying it. It really does help us out, I promise. Number 7. Being Named pretender. What could be worse than being referred to as a traitor? Well, how about when Scarlet Witch was referred to as an imposter? This was the new label she was given after it was revealed that she was not actually a mutant, but had been led to believe that she was one for most of her life. Due to the high evolutionary disguising her and her twin brother as both mutants after experimenting on them, and apparently giving them powers himself. During the Dawn of X relaunch in an issue of X-Men, we actually see stories being told of Scarlet Witch where young mutants are taught to refer to her as a pretender, someone who posed as a mutant but was not one and could not be trusted. Seems a little unfair considering that Wanda herself did not know her true origin until much later in life. She wasn't lying, she had been manipulated into believing she was truly a mutant and Magneto's daughter. Number 6. Death of her family Even in the MCU, Wanda has a tragic origin story. In the cinematic universe, she and her brother Pietro were orphaned at a young age after they managed to survive an attack that collapsed their apartment. Their parents were killed in the explosion that decimated their home, but they survived after a second missile landed but did not explode. However, this experience would go on to haunt them for the rest of their days, with the name on the missile being burned into their memories for years to come. And that name, of course, was Stark, which is why when we first meet the Maximoff twins in Age of Ultron, they are enemies and not allies of the Avengers. Number 5. Having Magneto for a father. At least for the time she did. While in the comics, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are no longer considered the children of Magneto, they still had him as a father for many years, and across many alternate Earths as well. While Magneto might be good with magnetizing, he is not very good at parenting. Magneto is usually a pretty strict father who has demanded much from his children over the years. I think Wanda, in terms of having a caring parent, was actually better off with her sentient cow mom that the High Evolutionary created. Number 4. Spell Backfire Even when Wanda tries to do good, she can't catch a break. In the X-Men Empire series tie-in, Scarlet Witch seeks to right her wrongs by bringing back all those mutants lost in the massacre at Genosha. She is trying to atone for her past and all the harm that she has brought to mutant kind. But poor Wanda can't seem to catch a break. Her ritual to revive the dead backfires and instead 
it simply turns those that she's trying to bring back into zombie mutants, instead of bringing them, you know, fully back to life. To make matters worse, we later find out that Doctor Strange warned her against trying to make amends for her sins this way, telling her she couldn't do what had already been done. This made Wanda think that she simply needed to shift her focus instead of realizing that she needed to actually forge new paths as opposed to undoing old tragedies. Number 3. Vision's Death Going back to the MCU for a moment, one of the worst things that happened to Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch was the death of Ultron in Infinity War. Wanda had to kill her synthesoid lover herself after Thanos showed up to attack Wakanda during an attempted procedure to safely remove the Mind Stone from Vision, attempted by Black Panther's brilliant sister, the Princess Shuri. As the procedure was cut short and everyone was pulled into the fray, Thanos was on his way to claim that stone when Viz asked Wanda to destroy it, and by extension, destroy him. She initially refused, but reluctantly agreed when Viz pressed her and insisted that she wouldn't and couldn't hurt him with her powers, and that all he felt when she used them on him was her. No pain, just her. Aw, so cute. Through tears, Scarlet Witch used her powers to destroy the stone, only to watch Thanos show up and use the Time Stone to rewind time, bring Vision back to life, so that he could destroy him by ripping the Mind Stone out of his head very painfully. Yikes! Number 2. Possessed by Cthon. This is one of those times that Wanda was made a villain, truly, without any of her own intent steering her there. Wanda was actually marked by Cthon at birth to act as the Elder God's vessel, should he find a way to return. Cthon would actually succeed in possessing Wanda and using her to return on more than one occasion. Though the first time around was probably the worst. When Mordred summoned Cthon via a ritual, allowing the god to basically take hold of Wanda and leaving the Avengers powerless against his will. Fortunately, the disaster that would be Cthon's return was averted before the ritual could be fully completed. Thank goodness for dolls with parts of Wanda's soul in them. That's because that's how it, that's what happened. Number one, losing her children. If you were to ask Wanda what one of the worst things that ever happened to her was, I'm sure she would likely answer the loss of her children. Although she would get her two twin boys, Billy and Tommy, back when their souls were basically reborn into our world, reincarnating them, she would never really get back the family that she had initially willed into existence. Using her power and from her desire, Wanda made it possible for her and Vision to have children together, and Wanda gave birth to two twin boys. However, when others learned that they weren't real and that their existence was kind of making reality unstable, they forced Scarlet Witch to confront the truth, temporarily destroying or displacing her children. Since they weren't really fully destroyed because they kind of did come back, but just in a really weird comic book way. Number 10, Wonder Man. As much as it makes sense in the comics that the Scarlet Witch and Wonder Man would end up together given that Vision's brain patterns came from Simon Williams, it's also kind of weird because, well, Vision's brain patterns came from Simon Williams. Which means in essence, Wanda's kind of dating just like the meat bag version of her synthesoid husband. The whole thing too, where Wonder Man refuses to allow his brain patterns to be used to restore Vision to his former self after he has become White Vision, while Viz is still married to Wanda, is also pretty bizarre too. As in doing so, Wonder Man has basically damned their marriage to failure because without said brain patterns, Vision can't feel emotions like he used to. And following that crash and burn, Wanda ends up with Simon. Hmm. Number 9. Axis While we've talked a lot about all the weird stuff that has happened to Wanda, we haven't talked as much about all the surprising and confusing moments or events that Wanda has caused. Well, yes I know, I've talked at length about House of M, but when it comes to Wanda's hex magics, there is a lot more mischief that has happened simply because she was trying to do good, such as the events of Axis. Axis is an event where we saw all of our favorite Marvel heroes and villains flip sides with the best heroes becoming super evil and the most vile villains becoming super good. This entire event was actually set off by Wanda, who was trying to help in the fight against Red Onslaught, the undefeatable mishmash of Red Skull with Charles Xavier's powerful telepathic brain, who was unleashed when Magneto attempted to defeat Red Skull by killing him. Scarlet Witch's solution was to use magic to flip the alignment of Red Onslaught, and in so doing, kinda accidentally flip the alignment of a bunch of other important characters. 
Oops. And friends, before we move on to our number eight spot, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this list and you want to learn even more about Wanda, give us a thumbs up. It lets us know you like it and it helps us out. Number eight, reaction to Carol's pregnancy. While Wanda Frank, as she was known then, had one of the most genuinely supportive reactions of the Avengers initially, even her reaction to Carol's very disturbing pregnancy ended up still not being very great. I mean, this whole story in the comics was WTF, but it's really the reactions for me that make it one of the most upsetting. Wanda is the first Avenger to find out about Miss Marvel's condition, and when Carol reveals how distressed she is at the news, and even confides her secret identity to her friend Wanda, Scarlet Witch is nothing but supportive. She reassures Carol that her fellow friends and Avengers will support her no matter what, and they'll get to the bottom of this. But once Carol delivers the baby a miraculous day later, Scarlet Witch herself becomes disillusioned by her own desire for children, and all of a sudden flips to being enamored and distracted by the baby as opposed to being at all all concerned for Carol, her emotions, her well-being, and what she just went through. Number 7. Her Visit From Hawkeye In a kind of startling turn of events, Wanda ended up being visited by Hawkeye after she had retreated to a community near Wendigore Mountain after the events of House of M. Clint was looking for Wanda and found her. Wanda also did not seem to recognize Clint or have any memory of her her life before living near Wondegore, or at least that's what she was, you know, putting out there. Instead, believing she had lived there with her elderly aunt for most of her life. Surprisingly, she and Clint would connect here in an intimate way. It's also implied that she randomly undressed him and put him to bed after he fainted as a result of the thin mountain air. Which is uh pretty weird. I feel like if I fainted and I woke up like that, I'd be like, um, what's why am I in my underwear? What's going on? Of course, later on, this encounter would be somewhat retconned when it was implied that this version of Wanda may have been a Doom bot, which of course makes this whole kind of random turn of events even more bizarre. Because it wasn't Wanda, it was like Doom bot Wanda, so. Weird. Number 6. Made an army of mutant zombies During the events of Empire, Scarlet Witch attempted to make amends for all the pain that she had caused when she uttered those three dire words, no more mutants. This was not so surprising given that Wanda has spent much of her life since then trying to either run from the pain of her past or to make amends for the pain that she has caused or kind of some semblance of both of those things. After being warned by Doctor Strange that nothing could erase the past and instead she would need to focus on the future, Wanda decided to interpret this by trying trying to fix a different mutant disaster. She attempted to resurrect the fallen mutants of Genosha, and in so doing, brought a mutant zombie horde to life. Yay! Resulting in the bizarre events of the Empire X-Men tie-in miniseries, which honestly was one of my favorite, yet also one of the weirdest stories of that whole event. Number 5. Where's Tommy? While Billy Kaplan, aka Wiccan, Wanda's reincarnated son, has become a bit of a lead character in the comics, Tommy Shepard, aka Speed, Wanda's other son, and Billy's reincarnated twin brother, has taken more of a backseat. And while Wiccan has been pretty involved in his mother's life, Tommy hasn't really been as present. This leads us to wonder if Wanda actually maybe loves Billy more, and what this could possibly mean for the two twins in the future if they end up becoming prominent characters in the MCU. By the way, I'm mostly joking about Wanda, you know, loving Billy more because I'm sure she loves both of her sons equally. She's a pretty good mom in that regard, I think. Actually, I would say she's a pretty good mom all around. I don't know. There are probably some people to disagree with me, but like, come fight me in the comments, I guess. Will Billy also take the main stage in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Will Tommy just kind of fades away? Or will Tommy be relegated like he kind of is in the comics to be more of a background character? He used here and there, but without as much of a main focus or trajectory of his own. Remember when he also just randomly showed up at Billy's wedding to Hulkling? He was just kind of there in the background like, hey, I'm here because I'm your brother. Uh, awkward. Also, can we talk about how Tommy and Billy are both mutants still, despite the fact that their mom was retconned as not being one of those? I know mutants can be born, by the way, to non-mutant parents, and that Wanda isn't even in their current incarnation the biological mom for either of them, but still, this is kind of weird, right? Or is it just me? Like, they're both mutants, and then Wanda's like, I was never a mutant. I'm like, what? Okay, fine, I guess. Number four, Doll Wanda. Remember that time Wanda was trapped in a doll? Yeah, that was an interesting turn of events. It was all part of a plot to defeat Cthon, the god of chaos, who attached himself to Wanda at birth and as such has threatened to possess her fully on more than one occasion. The doll was basically imbued with Wanda's soul and was used as a trap for Cthon, with Wanda eventually moving from the tiny doll back to her own body and Cthon ending up being trapped in the doll. The credit for this weird plan goes to Papa Django Maximoff, Wanda and Pietro's adopted 
adoptive father. Good job, Dad. Number three, Captain America. Remember when Scarlet Witch and Captain America almost dated? No? Well, listen on. These two narrowly avoided ending up in the weirdest, likely most destructive romance to come out of the Avengers team. Following Wonder Man's death, Scarlet Witch ended up coming to her teammate Cap's rescue, and the two had a weird exchange of flirtations. It was strange considering there hadn't been much romantic chemistry between these two before in the past, but they were good friends who had known each other for some time, so many of us shrugged and thought, okay, maybe. And I guess the writers were like, I mean, Scarlet Witch isn't dating anyone right now, Wonder Man's dead, who are we gonna pair her with? But then it got even weirder. Along with a few kisses came some pretty emotional hallucinations or dreams of Steve's, and a few awkward conversations where Steve brought up his concern for the age difference between them. In the end, however, Wanda convinced him to give the relationship a chance, only to find out that Wanda didn't remember any of it. Also, in terms of the age difference, I love that Wanda's like, I mean, pretty much everyone in you have like a really weird age difference when you think about it, so yeah. We later learn on that Wanda had no memory of any of these exchanges because she was on the verge of a breakdown, but it didn't make this exchange any less weirder, truth be told. The fact that she forgot it just makes it even more weird. Number two, Vision issue number seven. Tom King and Michael Walsh's issue seven of Vision is pretty much a double WTF moment after WTF moment for Wanda's character. It's a heartbreaking issue that charts the history of her and Vision's relationship, marriage, and breakup. This issue also provides some shocking revelations in regards to how exactly Vision attempted to move on with his life after Wanda ended up with Wonder Man. Very shocking. Everything that the Scarlet Witch goes through in the issue and the way both she and Vision are drawn here give you a great sense for just how very much on the edge of madness both of these characters have been at different points in their lives. There is this impending sense of doom that permeates in this issue that makes you feel kind of uncomfortable, but like in the best of ways. Basically, if you want to feel uncomfortable and read like a great WandaVision issue, you need to read it. It's really good. Number one, Janet casually causes Wanda's psychotic break. Also related to Scarlet Witch's psychotic break, we have Janet, aka the Wasp, making an appearance. After Wanda was made to forget about the existence of her children, her mind wiped clean of them by Agatha Harkness for what was believed to be her own good, or at least that's what Agatha said, Janet accidentally brought them up during some downtime while sunbathing with Wanda at the Avengers Mansion, and then tried to play it cool like she had never mentioned them. She was like, huh, what did I say? I have to go to the bathroom, it's fine. The look on Wanda's face as Janet attempts to excuse herself momentarily from the conversation tells you all you need to know about what kind of curiosity turned fury this awoke in the Scarlet Witch. Nice going, Janet. Number 10, Mastermind Woos the Scarlet Witch. If you go way, way back in the comics, back to the very beginning of X-Men, you'll find out all about the first person to compete for Wanda's heart, way before Vision was even in the picture. We're talking about Mastermind. And of course, Mastermind's attempts to woo Wanda left us wincing at just how painful they were to read about. Jason Wingard would obnoxiously assume that Wanda wanted to be with him, and that they would make the best match ever and power couple, but he was quick to anger and would also threaten to defeat Wanda almost every time time she denied him. Be like, y'all make you pay for denying me. Oh jeez. She was just none too impressed with his powers, which she dismissed as being kinda lame because they were just illusions. And honestly, not even some of the best illusions out there really. So Wanda, I feel you. Also, Mastermind's just a creepy guy, so it's probably hard for him. Well, it can't be that hard for him to find love. He did have daughters, so... Someone was into it. Number nine, Namor's Comparison. With all the classic issues I've read, I really should not be too surprised by this one. <sighs> and yet. At one point, Namor finds himself allied with Wanda and helps her to strike out at the X-Men to get her brother back whom they have kidnapped before Magneto destroys her brother along with the mutant heroes. Namor, however, doesn't seem to just help Wanda out of the kindness of his heart. Namor isn't really big on kindness, to be honest not the kindest person I know. He helps Scarlet Witch because he finds himself attracted to her, even comparing his level of attraction to that of his feelings for Sue Storm in the Fantastic Four. What? Comparing these two women seems pretty absurd because, well, they're both different. They both look very different as well, but also just the fact that he could only 
have helped Scarlet Witch if he was attracted to her also just seems ridiculous. Like, why couldn't he just help her because he wanted to? Though, I know it was the 60s and I, that's just kind of how it went in comics. Are you a pretty lady hero or a villain or just a character? Well then, everyone's probably attracted to you. Before we move on to this next spot on our list, if you enjoy learning more about Wanda with me, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and maybe we'll even give you some more Wanda lists. I love talking about Scarlet Witch, so I'm down with it. Number eight, almost marrying Doctor Doom. Gasp. This is a moment that had everyone doing double takes and asking, but why? Wanda was believed by Wiccan, her reincarnated son, Billy Kaplan, to be in danger in the castle of Victor Von Doom. But when he went to save her, he learned that she was there of her own choice, and she seemingly was head over heels in love with Victor? Huh? What? It turns out that Wanda had some selective memory loss, which may have helped to sway her into accepting Doom's marriage proposal. But even after she got her memories back, she still actually seemed to want to marry Doom. She seemed to be genuinely interested in him. In fact, in a weird turn of events, it was villain Doom who actually ended up spurning her after he attempted to take on her chaos magic, but found her to be too powerful for him to wield. Even knowing that Doom had likely manipulated her for a chance at that power, she still tried to help him, only for him to rebuke her, resort to name calling, so rude Doom, and insist that she was so unskilled that he was somehow in fact behind all of the wrongdoings of her past. He's like, you don't even know what you're doing, you think even you did all the things that were bad? That wasn't you, that was me. What? <laughs> Number seven, Vision dating Carol Danvers. And if you're wondering what this has to do with Wanda, well, she was right there when this all started. Awkward. Especially considering that Miss Marvel and Scarlet Witch were always painted to me as being close friends in the Avengers. In fact, I think Carol actually might be one of Wanda's BFFs, definitely at least within that Avengers team, within that friend circle. After Vision and Wanda were no longer together, Vision decides to ask Warbird, AKA Carol Danvers out, Right when Wanda and Carol are in the middle of some playful banter. Hmm. While Wanda says it's all fine, her reaction seems to imply that it really isn't. Like, look at that face. Also, I feel like a date between Vision and Carol would be even more awkward than Carol's date with Spider-Man. And that was pretty awkward. It was cute, but it was awkward, so yeah. Number six, M-Day. One of the most insane moments in Wanda's history would have to be when she eradicated the Earth of almost all mutants. This happened as a result of Wanda being confronted by her friends, the Avengers, and those who had never really liked her, the mutants of the X-Men. After making a world in which mutants were the dominant group and trying to give most of her friends and the mutants a happy life, this reality came tumbling down. And in the aftermath, everyone still wanted her dead. In fact, people that didn't want her dead before, like Spider-Man, really wanted her dead. Not knowing what else to do, Wanda did the unthinkable and cast a spell with the words, no more mutants, eradicating all of the mutants on planet Earth. Well, now we accept this as part of mutant and comic book history, at the time this was pretty shocking and elevated Wanda's level of powers even more than we thought possible. Number five, punished for a mental break. And if you thought it couldn't get weirder than Wanda getting rid of most of the mutants with them coming after her still, even after she was simply trying to give them what they wanted, ugh, it does get weirder. Let's rewind a bit to talk about another shocking moment in Wanda's history around House of M when her friends and the mutants had a meeting to decide what to do about Wanda what to do. The Scarlet Witch at this point hadn't made the House of M reality yet, but was mentally suffering, and Professor Charles Xavier was no longer capable of containing her unpredictable powers and dangerous mind. So dangerous, so crazy. Most of the talk was about how Wanda needed to be taken out, with a few heroes speaking up against this, and Xavier actually not knowing what to do either way. So helpful, thanks Xavier. It was a hard situation to be sure, but it still blows my mind that these people People who knew that Wanda was at her core a hero considered killing her because she was volatile after going through a lot of stuff. A little more compassion here would have been nice, but hey. I'm still waiting for compassion for Scarlet Witch. I feel like people are always just like a punching bag for everyone. This poor woman. Number four, raised by a cow. 
It's true. One of the high evolutionary's first creations happened to be the evolved cow, Bova. Bova Ayrshire would act as the midwife when both Wanda and Pietro were born, and would act as their nursemaid. Bova even gets a seat at the table when Wanda and Vision sit down to a family dinner together. We can see Bova is considered one of the members of the family and is featured there, while Simon Williams, aka Wonder Man, whose brain waves were used in the creation of Vision, gives his toast. So weirdly enough, Wonder Man's like, you're like my brother, Vision. Yeah, Wanda's family tree is pretty weird and super complicated at this point. What's even more weird is that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver aren't the only heroes that Bova has helped to raise or to act as a midwife for. Also, if you want to learn more about Scarlet Witch's family, please let us know in the comments, because I'd love to do a video just on all that stuff. There's a lot of things there. Number three, her relationship with Quicksilver. I really didn't want to go here, but then I thought, hey, if I don't go there, you'll all be wondering why it was missing when it was just such a gross and confounding moment in the ultimate line of comics. You're going to be like, how is all of the stuff that you listed here worse than that? So thank you, thank you for making me go here. I didn't want to go here, but we're gonna go here. In the Ultimate Universe, for those who may not know, we got different versions of a lot of our characters. Some of these were really cool. For example, we might not actually have Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury, if not for the Ultimate Universe, where we actually saw a version of Nick Fury that basically was inspired and based off of the actor himself. In fact, this version of Nick would even cross over to the 616 Universe, even after the Ultimate Universe of 1610 was gone. How However, for Wanda and Pietro, the changes they saw weren't nearly as good or cool. In the Ultimate Universe, the siblings' close connection is reimagined as a romantic relationship. One that shocked even Ultimate Wolverine. And you know, in any reality, Wolverine would be a hard guy to shock. Number two, her kids. Oh boy, Wanda's kids are a whole series of WTF moments, one right after the other. First, there is the fact that Wanda and Vision couldn't actually have children naturally because Vision was a synthesoid. So how did she get pregnant? By using pieces of Mephisto's soul to conceive. Yep, her children are literal demon spawn. Even Vision knew something was up, and he himself actually encouraged his wife, Scarlet Witch, to face the fact that their children were not theirs, really, and were a lie, which is also pretty shocking, and I mean, it's kind of awful. I mean, you know, he's right, but yeesh, Vision, have some tact. He's just yelling at her, and I'm like, ah! Wanda was forced to give her children up, and Agatha Harkness, her mentor, ensured that the souls were returned to Mephisto after their destruction, and then wiped Wanda's memory of them. Another yikes. From there, it gets weirder, as the fragments of soul somehow got loose again, and then were reborn as Wanda's kids, but in other bodies from separate families. Does that make sense? Number one, no more mutant. If we are talking about one of the most surprising and confusing moments in comic book history for Wanda, it's gotta be the moment when it was revealed that she was never actually a mutant. Ah, what? Her or her brother, who were for a time loyal members of Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and were led to believe that they were actually Magneto's children. But apparently, no, none of that was real. It was all a fake out created by the High Evolutionary, <laughs> who disguised them as mutants after experimenting on them. However, the truth started to come out when Wanda, after casting a blood curse spell on her family members, found that Magneto was not actually affected by it, whereas Pietro was. This is definitely a weird revelation, though it creates lots of holes in past comic book history and stories. Like, how was Wanda's power able to be amplified and utilized by mutant powerhouse Hope Summers in order to defeat the Phoenix Force, if Wanda's powers themselves weren't at all mutant? This isn't Hope's whole thing that like she can only do that with mutant powers? Number 10, Gypsy Witch. Coming to us from Morgan Le Fay's Warped Reality, this alternate version of Scarlet Witch was one of the only people remaining untouched by Morgan's powers. All the other Avengers involved believe they were actually a part of the Queen's elite guards in what appeared to be medieval England. Because Wanda was aware of what had transpired and still had her memories intact, she was locked away. Oh no! As dark as that is, she would eventually get free and end up saving the day and defeating Morgan Le Fay. So this version and story didn't end up being all dark at least. You can check out this whole fantastical story and the world in the 1998 run of Avengers. Check it out. Number nine, 
Marvel Noir. Dark in a very literal sense of the word. We have Wanda Magnus from the Marvel Noir world, which is based off of the film noir crime genre. Here Wanda is the daughter of Eric Magnus. Eric is the chief of detectives in the city, but also runs a criminal organization known as the Brotherhood. This version of Wanda is very carefree, maybe too carefree, especially when it comes to her father's position as a crime lord. Wanda also has some deep gambling debt that she simply ignores because of who her dad is, despite the fact that having it puts her life in danger. She's got a classic femme fatale feeling to her in this world. You can check out this dark spin on Wanda and other classic Marvel characters in the X-Men Noir series. In fact, I think there's a whole bunch of noir series similar to uh, Spider-Man Noir, if you also like, you know, that noir, which is probably the most famous world of it? Version of it? Number 8, MC2. Wanda had it pretty rough in the MC2 alternate Earth of 982. Here she ends up in a coma after attempting to help her fellow heroes confront a very dark and evil alternate Earth led by Doctor Doom. When this mission fails, Wanda ends up being relied upon to close the portal between the two worlds and ends up comatose as a result. But it gets worse. Even when Scarlet Witch is revived here, it's only to be manipulated and used by Loki. Fortunately, she ends up breaking free of his influence and coming too. But for a while there, it was looking pretty bleak for Wanda and some of the other heroes as well. You can check out this last story where the Avengers face Loki in the Last Hero Standing story and miniseries. Literally, it's just called The Last Hero Standing. Number seven, Marvel Cinematic Universe. While Wanda Maximoff of MCU fame might not seem like an alternate that is dark, scary, or tragic on the surface, all you need to do is peek a tiny bit below that surface level to see what I am talking about. In WandaVision, we are now getting to explore Wanda's feelings and see her kind of try to deal with the fact that she is deeply depressed. So depressed and distraught, in fact, following the events of Endgame that she may have seemingly manipulated reality into giving her her own happily ever after? I say may because we don't know for sure yet if someone might be manipulating Wanda into using her powers this way. There are still a lot of questions to be answered at this point in the show. I believe uh, we're on episode 7 right now at the time that I'm filming this, just for context. Regardless, however, it has been established that she has the ability to warp reality. Add in her tragic backstory with the death of her parents and the death of her brother, her villainous past, her current state of mind, and the fact that she almost single-handedly wiped out Thanos after her return in Endgame, because yeah, that happened, and Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch is still pretty dark and pretty powerful. Number six, Age of Apocalypse. Everything is pretty dark in Age of Apocalypse, no? Wanda included. Scarlet Witch in this reality died the same year that she was introduced. Oh shucks. She would then later be resurrected in a sense when the human resistance created a ton of Scarlet Witch clones. The purpose of doing so was to try and use her abilities to depower mutants in a similar way to what 616 Wanda had accomplished following House of M. You see, they found out that in the 616 reality, that's the thing that happened. In the end, AOA Magneto heard about all of this and in a fit of anger, destroyed all the clones, except for one, because you know, I'm sure he misses his daughter. Number Number 5. Marvel Zombies no one escapes the dark touch belonging to the reality of Earth 2149, that of Marvel zombies, and I mean no one. Here, Scarlet Witch ended up zombified by Frank Castle and later allied herself with a zombified kingpin. Dominated by hunger, zombie Scarlet Witch uses her husband Vision's parts to block radio signals of the survivors. She used Vision's undying love for her to make him do what she wanted. Pretty dark. And then she wouldn't even give him a zombie kiss. Poor Vision. More zombie kiss is for vision. Number four, Days of Future Past. In this reality, Wanda ends up being plugged into a machine, basically, and used as an energy source, left completely drained and looking and probably feeling really, really rough. Wanda does end up getting rescued by Wolverine, Jubilee, and Magneto, but kind of dies in the process. I personally think Days of Future Past is one of the darkest alternate realities, period, especially in Scarlet Witch's case. She was like used of all of her energy, and then even when she gets saved, she dies. There's a lot of alternate realities where Wanda just dies, and like dies kind of brutally. 
And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are enjoying this video and you want more lists about Scarlet Witch, please let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number three, Weapon Hex. Weapon Hex comes to us from Gamora's Infinity Stone created Warp World. Warp World was created when Gamora contained the souls of the universe inside the Soul Stone. Ha <laughs> ha Folding the world in half and thereby combining souls together to create new beings in an alternate reality made up of combinations of Marvel's famed characters. They got fused. Weapon Hex is a combination of, you guessed it, Laura Kinney's X-23 and Wanda Maximoff's Scarlet Witch. Weapon Hex, get it? Weapon Hex has a tragic backstory wherein she was born to become the host for the eldritch warp world god, Mephikathon. I think I'm saying that right. Mephikathon? Her father attempted to weaponize her and use her in this way, but her mother actually ended up having second thoughts about all of this, leading her father to manipulate Weapon Hex into killing her own mother. What? That's dark. I wonder how many times I've said dark in this list. She have like a dark counter, probably a lot. Number two, Ultimate Scarlet Witch. One of the darkest versions of Scarlet Witch around has to be Ultimate Scarlet Witch from Earth 1610. Why? Well, because this version of Wanda had a much too close relationship with Pietro. In the alternate universe of Earth 1610, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were together romantically, despite still being brother and sister. Yeah, they're still brother and sister in that reality, in case you were wondering. They did their best to keep their relationship on the down low, but some still ended up uncovering their secret. The Ultimate Universe was also at one point in competition to take over as the main continuity, competing with Earth 616. You can thank everyone's favorite big green lawyer, Jennifer Walters of Earth 616, for preventing that from happening. Thank you, Jen. In Wanda's case, it would have definitely been pretty awful if that had happened. Number one, Scarlet Warlock. This version of Wanda is a gender bend who happened to be on the side of the baddies at the time, allied and working alongside Magneto and his brotherhood of evil mutants. Scarlet Warlock, as we know him, attempted to work his hex magic to transfer the captured Wolverine of their world's adamantium skeleton to a female Magneto. Because their reality, Magneto's the lady. However, being that even in this reality, Scarlet's magic is highly unpredictable, Scarlet Warlock's spell misfired, instead combining Magneto, Quicksilver, Wolverine, and Mesmero, and himself, all into one being who later becomes known as the great villain, Brother Mutant. Brother Mutant's goal is to kill all non-mutants on Earth. Yeah, pretty evil. You can check out this alternate version of Scarlet Witch in Exiles 85 and 86, where a team of alternate universe versions of Wolverine team up to try and take him down. Also just alternate universe Wolverines, it's always fun. 